I don't want to embarrass our newlyweds, but they're back. <laughs> I've learned a few things over the years. I've watched you navigate hard life decisions for yourself, for your family, for others who depend on you. And in these moments, I've learned about strength. I've watched you make a room laugh, break the thick ice of tension, and land jokes like a pro. In these moments, I've learned the value of laughter and a good sense of humor. I've watched you become a teacher, grow into a counselor, develop into a leader. In these moments, I've learned how to allow God to help me grow. I've watched you help those in need, come alongside those in trouble, give to those who don't deserve it. And in those moments, I've learned the gifts of humility and mercy. I've watched you pray through a crisis, display grace under fire, show courage when faced with difficulty. In these moments, I've learned the importance of prayer. Over the years, Dad, I've watched you in every moment. I grew when I didn't know it. I learned when I wasn't even willing to listen. I developed new skills when I didn't even think I was ready. Dad, thank you for these moments. You shaped and molded me by being the dad you are. And I'm so thankful. Times I've made my family laugh. <laughs> you know, it's you know to be able to really relate and to love. You know, the greatest thing of God, God is love, and we can never lose sight of of agape love, that unconditional love. You know, that's kind of with our. Our children to have an unconditional love. So I've got a message here the Lord put on my heart. Dads, you're in the driver's seat. Not the hot seat. Okay? You're, you're in the driver's seat. And it's like, where, where are you taking your family? Now, I can remember, you know, growing up and, you know, one thing that we did when we lived in Burden, we, uh, on the dead end street across from Grandma Cotton, is that on Sunday evenings, we'd, we'd sometimes go, go for a ride, for a drive, and everybody, the kids would load up in the back seats, and mom and dad, you know, dad would be the driver, and we'd just kind of drive around the town, drive around, you know, out, outskirts, and see the sunset, and then, you know, you get a treat. You know, and Scott thought he had to be in charge of the back seat. <laughs> It was good. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny to watch Maverick in, in, in Dallas because Maverick will try to tell his, his little sister what kind of known Dallas. You know, you can't, in, 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 in Dallas, I'm like, <laughs> I'm not listening to you, brother. <laughs> so, but it's, it's kind of just, you see, of just family. And, and when you think of, of Father's Day, you, you think of family. And you think of, of all that's a part of, of being a family and, you know, all these, you know, decorations and just thinking about being a, a car driver, you know, a race driver. All that goes into that. I mean, they make it look easy, but all that, that it takes to get to that level of, I mean, how fast do they go, Scotty? I mean, uh, around the... About 210 and I mean I've I've been like 140 on a motorcycle <laughs> and that's fast that's that's not real smart but that was back in the day before Jesus <laughs> okay? you know about going fast and, and but I can't imagine going 210 miles and, and cars just right there I mean, so, so sometimes it's like when you're in the driver's seat, you know, you're, you're, you're in control. Now, the, 
The definition of driving means this, the control and operation of a motor vehicle. Let that sink in. The control and operation of a motor vehicle. See, you know, the control and operation of your family. Dads, and sometimes we don't realize that God has, has given us that responsibility to be the spiritual leaders in our homes. And, and it's like, that's kind of what he was saying. It's like, Larry, you're, you're in the driver's seat. And, and, and you're to lead your family. You're, you're to drive your family. You're, you're to take your you know, family to places that, that, that are safe for them, good for them. And, uh, you know, how many here uh, remember just hopping in the car and going for a ride with, with dad driving? Anybody remember dad driving? And I heard one where you, you were going to Six Flags and well, we were trying. <laughs> you know, we trying to get there. But it's like we all can say that, that you know, hey, I remember a time of, of dad in the driver's seat and, and, and driving us somewhere. And uh, how many know that if, if you're behind the wheel, you're in control? Yeah. Remember taking mom places and she'd be, ooh, 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 you know, reaching for the dashboard. It's like, mom. But sometimes it's like, have you ever ridden with somebody you thought, oh, I'll never ride with them again? <laughs> uh, I'll never ride with them again. But see, as as fathers that, that we're called, that God's given us this responsibility in, in the home to, to lead our families. And I, I, I kind of wanted, I, I felt like the Lord saying, just kind of put it to something fun. How many know that God has fun? How many know that God laughs? Yeah, amen. Sometimes people think God's just really just stern. That's all you get up. <laughs> You just say one wrong word. Man. Just trust me, buddy. <laughs> and, and, and we're going to see that that's not really how a father should lead or drive their family. And, and so, you know, learning to drive a, a four-speed. Anybody in here ever learn how to drive a four-speed? Do you remember who, who taught you? you? Remember who taught you? You're your dad? How many dads taught you to drive a four-speed? Anybody in here? You got some? Yeah? Good. My brother Stan said, get in here. <laughs> Just, you know, three on the column. Anybody remember those? And Stan, he had a couple of Jeeps that had you had to be able to do it and learn how. But we're going to learn how spiritually, how to drive this vehicle, how to, how to lead our family, how to drive our family. And not say, oh, I can't learn that. I don't want to learn a four-speed. I mean, today we're going to teach you how to drive a four-speed. Amen. 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 So I'm going to ask Pastor Tony to come up here. He's, he's got the first two gears, and then I've got the last <laughs> third and fourth gear. So come on up here, Pastor Tony. Let's give him a hand. Come on. Thank you, sir. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you all this morning. I, I have the same shirt. Yeah. <laughs> just, I just, just want you to know. Is, is that okay? Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. It'll work. <laughs> well, talking about driving, I remember my father, you know, one of the funniest things I, I remember as a, a kid was heading to St. Louis, but not knowing the way. Now, how many of you remember a time before Matt? Uh, quest and maps on your phone and GPS and you had to have an actual paper map um, and so we we're traveling along and, and my dad spots a, a car heading that direction with kids in it that looked excited so we followed them <laughs> nowhere near Six Flags <laughs> so that brought that story to mind as pastor was talking about that but I do remember us getting in the car and going for ice cream driving around the lake, driving out and around, and you just learn where you live. A lot of that is just learning where you live and who's who, and that's neighbor so-and-so. The things that we don't think about that make an impact on our kids. 
And as we talk about first gear, one of the hardest things to do in learning to drive a four speed is get it out of first gear. That's the hardest part. If you can get it rolling, you're all right. But getting it going can be really tough. And so first gear for, for us as dads can be tough as well, the subject of discipline. And how do we discipline our children? You know, Hebrews 12, 4 through 11 gives us a model of that. And we're not going to climb through all those scriptures this morning. But <coughs> verse 4, if you look into that, it, it, it tells us that discipline will help prevent sin. That it will help prevent sin. God, just, his desire is for fathers to lead and guide their families. By design, we're both protector and provider. But in order to do both successfully, we must set healthy boundaries. Boundaries that keep the good in and the bad out, dads. Boundaries keep us safe. Godly discipline provides safety. And that safety is where we, where we want our families to reside. As spiritual children of God, he wants that same thing for us, does he not? Doesn't he want us safe and under his umbrella of protection? But there are boundaries that we have to walk within. And if we cross those boundaries, was the discipline or the correction his fault? No. It was on our end. So as fathers, sometimes we have to understand we want our kids to remain in that umbrella of protection as well. Avoiding unnecessary trouble and difficulty. So remember, godly discipline prevents sin. Number two, we want to administer discipline through our actions and words. Verse 5 brings that out. Again, in Hebrews 12, 5, here we're conveying our correction. How are we doing that? When we convey correction, how are we doing it? How are we speaking to that person? How are we administering correction to our children in, in a time where maybe we're upset? Has, it, has anybody thought that before? I want to spank you just because I'm mad at you. <laughs> but that's a problem. We have to be able to take a step back and look at the situation and pray in the spirit. How many of you know that will help a lot? To recenter us, to bring us back into bounds. Ephesians 6, 4 in the NLT says, Don't provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them or speak to them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Proverbs 13, 24 in the message says, A refusal to correct is a refusal to love. Amen. Love your children by disciplining them. A good question may be, how am I disciplining them? Am, am I disciplining them out of love or punishing them because I'm angry? There is a difference. That leads to our next point and our motive for discipline. Why are we disciplining it should be love. How many of you have been corrected by a father or a mother in love before? And you received that correction. You knew it wasn't, it wasn't good what you did. You knew you, you deserved the correction. It wasn't pleasant at the time, as the Bible says, but later on you saw the value in it. How many of you could say that over your life? You're thankful for your parents' boundaries and protection and discipline that they put in your life and kept you in, in bounds, so to speak. Sometimes it's best just to, to breathe. Not every punishment needs to be the max punishment. You know, sometimes we say, you're grounded for three weeks, and our kids tell their friends, I'll be out in three days. <laughs> Why? Because they know us as parents. The punishment should fit the crumb. Sometimes we're so upset about the act that we forget to be fair in the issue of our judgment. And we have to be cautious in that. Remember, we want to produce teachers, not tyrants. There's no power in, in men in having just the authority to be able to discipline. That means nothing. The real power is to do it in love and to do it in a way that brings God on the scene. Second gear, shifting gears, we move on from discipline into what? Provision. That's another thing that the Bible addresses us on. And men, the, the value of provision. 1 Timothy 5.8 in the Passion Translation says, For if a believer fails to provide for their own relatives when they are in need, they have compromised their convictions of faith and need to be corrected. For they are living worse than the unbeliever. The Bible makes it clear that godly fathers accept our responsibility to be a provider for our family. But what are we providing? Is it just finances? No, there are spiritual needs our children have. 
needs that they need to have dad reading and praying with them dad spending time with them in praise and worship times of correction times of riding around and getting an ice cream times of having that bonding together those times are necessary spiritual needs our children have are, 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 are ingrained within them that us as fathers are supposed to help produce students of God's word produce kids who love Jesus and see that in their homes they also have physical needs that means we must work men the Bible says if we don't work we don't eat now before sin even entered the world Genesis 2 15 says this the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to keep it work is an act of worship and we're supposed to provide for our families did we know that did we know in our working it's an act of worship and our children watch how we go to work they watch how we get up they watch how we come home they're they're evaluating our faces evaluating our countenances our words how we talk about our bosses how we talk about those in authority how we talk about fellow co-workers work is an act of worship that worship brings fulfillment, and that fulfillment encourages us to continue moving forward. A godly father also provides relational needs for his children. A wise dad raises his kids in church. We were raised in church. How many of you were raised in church? When the doors were open, we were there. That's just how it was. There was no question. I don't think we ever asked our parents, are we going to church today? I don't ever remember asking that. It had to be, you know, pretty pretty severe. We lived about 30 miles from our church, and it was a two-lane road. And it had to be pretty severe for us not to go. We just knew that. Our friends didn't ask us to do things on Wednesday night or Sunday morning because they knew. We couldn't stay all night at places Saturday night because church was Sunday morning. It was established in our home. And how many of you know the Bible says that if we establish that, that when our children grow old, they won't depart from it? Amen. Now it says grow old. Sometimes we're praying and, and, and asking God for our kids to come back to it, but Scripture says when they grow old, we have that promise. So who knows how long that will take? We need to keep speaking and praying over them. Right. Yes. Believe in God for them to return home, but they're watching us and modeling our example. They also have relational needs that they need to have friends and see healthy friendships. And that instilled the value of church brings healthy relationships. How many of you have healthy friendships right here in this body that you're thankful for? That have been established because you come to church. Those things are valuable to our kids and to us. A godly father will also have uh, respect and admiration for his godly wife and raise their children together ultimately with godly wisdom and then also a father is responsible lastly to provide generational needs the generational needs of his kids making money to provide for your family is an honorable thing managing it wisely is another challenge <laughs> Proverbs thirteen twenty two says a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children a godly and wise father first cultivates himself then his children and ultimately that is passed on from generation to generation to generation how many of you want to see a generational home continue on in this not only in your home here in this church generation after generation raised up raised up to know who Jesus is raised up in the power of the Holy Spirit raised up to be people who are serving in their local churches, serving right here. As fathers, the most valuable thing that we can leave our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren is Jesus. Amen, bro. You know, I've, I've heard before, well, I couldn't leave my children a lot. Well, if you left them, Jesus, understand this. If you write nothing else down in this session today, just write this down. He's the ultimate inheritance. Amen. Jesus is the ultimate inheritance. We can make our kids rich by providing Jesus. And Jesus can lead them to physical and, and earthly wealth just through the knowledge of the Holy Spirit if that's part of the plan for their life. That he has for them. He's everything. He can lead us to earthly wealth. 
Amen. Pastor said it many times, that money makes wings and flies away. So it's important we're leaving them something. we got to strive to raise our kids to know and love him, to embrace the gifts and the power of the Holy Spirit in full measure. Dad, we're responsible for that. We're responsible for teaching them the full gospel. And in that, it's important that we remember when they're old, as Proverbs 22, 6 says, they won't depart from it. Pastor was acknowledging us as fathers today as, as he welcomed you and, and asked you to say to your fathers how much you love them, tell them you appreciate them, and, and I love that. But I also would encourage us as fathers to look at our families and thank God for them. Tell them how much we appreciate them, how much we appreciate their involvement in our life, the helpmate that they are to us, especially our spouse. And to understand that it, it seems impossible, some of these things. Well, how can I do that? Well, we can't, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can. It's through Jesus that we can accomplish these things, men. There's a lot of things that we need to sharpen up in our driving skills. You know, sometimes if you get a close shifting pattern, first and third are right next to each other. You can try and take off. It happened to me. I was in third gear, third gear. You can't take off. I can't take off. Back to the basics. Reposition myself. Sometimes we just need to reposition ourselves and look at where we're at and say, am I being an example to my family in these ways? And if not, Lord, forgive me for it. Help me to, to improve upon that. And to take a look at the future of our families and know that they're counting on us. Families, pray for your fathers. Fathers, pray for your families. Pastor's got two more gears to cover. But I appreciate you hearing that this morning and receiving that. And I hope that it helps you. You know, I can say this. I've been a father for many years now and I haven't gotten it right all the time. There's many times that I've, I've been, uh, you know, ashamed of my actions over the years. But how many of you know, as we grow as fathers, those things disappear. We grow into the people God's called us to become. And that should be who we are. That should be who we're striving to become. So we'll get you halfway there. Pastor's going to take you the rest of the way. Thank you, sir, for that. Going. About 25. About 25. <laughs> How many want to go faster? Yeah. You know, thinking about being fast, it's like my brother Tommy. I got it. <laughs> we went over to the Comas to, uh, they had a skating rink over there. Yeah. What was the guy's name? Harley. Harley. Okay. Anybody ever skate over at the Comas? He did. And uh, just, Mom, I mean, he, he'd have gotten in trouble. <laughs> we're, we're going down. Is it called? What, uh, what's that road called? I mean, it's just like 20 miles just straight shot. There's no turns. They're the just, black top. What is it? The Coma's Blacktop. And he had that white, I don't know, it had a 400 motor in it. And we're, we're going fast with the windows down. You ever go fast with the windows down? <laughs> As a kid, it was great. <laughs> but uh, we were going fast. You, I, I don't know if you remember that time or not. Do you remember that time? It was fun. <laughs> Bro, it was fun. I still remember to this day, you know, of just things that about driving. And, you know, it's important to understand that, you know, what Pastor Tony just said and what I'm about to tell you also for third and fourth year and, you know, in in Proverbs twenty two six, you know, third gear is mentoring or training, and and, and sometimes at different ages, it, it requires different uh, methods, and and I think sometimes, you know, when when you're trying to train a, a child, you train them, you know, and, and a teenager, you, it's not the same. I mean, there's, there's things that you have to be able to, to understand that and, and to know that, you know, if I'm going to train, it's like 
It's not in just one lane. This is how you train. There's, there's many ways of training. There's many, many ways of mentoring. And, you know, for, for us to, to understand, which Pastor Tony read in Ephesians 6, 4, I forgot to tell him, don't take my scripture. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it talks about fathers, don't provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Now, that... That's going to take some knowledge on you, Dad. You know, how much knowledge do you know about the Lord? How much do you know about the Word? Because you can't give something to your children that you don't have. So you might say, well, I don't know where to give it. I'm holding it. If you don't have one, let me know and I'll get you one. But this is the training manual. This is to help you to mentor little kids to where even your adult children, you know, your, your children will always be your children at whatever age. There's things, Dad, that you're, you'll still be able to speak into your children's life forever. So, so, so don't think, well, you know what, once they got out of out of the house, I got no more, uh, you know, authority over them. That's a lie from the devil. You know, there's things that, that your children will always look up to you and, and, and need you. They'll need you. I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll need you to speak into their life. And, you know, with, with training, you know, setting the right environment. This is so important, dads, to set the right environment, not the wrong one. You know, I've, I've, I've seen in, in different places, I can remember one where a, a dad slamming his son to the concrete <laughs> basketball court. Now, he, he felt like he had a reason because this friend of mine pushed his mom. And that was a no-no to dad. So dad was trying to make a believer out of him and made a believer out of me. <laughs> like I'm standing there like, I gotta go home. <laughs> this is, but it's like, <laughs> there, there are some places where, where there's destructive criticism, unrealistic expectations, intimidation, name calling, put downs, um, even to the point where I'll make a man out of you. I mean, you know, there's some there's there's some people that try to lead that dads that try to lead that way, and 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 you wonder, you know, it's like this. It's it's if you grow up and you see your dad do something, what do the children do? They they repeat. I mean, if they see something uh, being done, the one thing that my father did, he would take a tool and he just. He get mad. You, you, you remember he throw, throw a tool or two, punch something. Guess what I learned? How to throw a tool. <laughs> How to punch things. And it's and it's like so. Dads, watch what you do. Watch what you do because little kids are are, are learning what you're doing. And, uh, you know, those are a few things that had to be corrected in my life. You know, and, and God helped me to do that. Amen. Uh, he's a good, good father. Another environment is, is a place of, of tenderness, kindness, uh, words of, of, of affection, a place where there's patience. Anybody have a dad that was just so patient with you. Anybody just patient and just work with you and just wouldn't get wouldn't get upset and, 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 and throw a fit. Wouldn't now now if you've thrown a fit, you know, praise God, we can repent. Amen. You might think, oh, this is supposed to be a good, 
you know what what I'm trying to get us to see that third year you you, you will always be mentoring and training your children ever how old they become Amen. and 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 we, we need to understand that so there's different ways of that they'll allow us to speak into their life but I I, I know this that it's it's a uh, to listen to those you know that have mentored you that have been there for you that has provided for you uh, that has done things to to help your life to be better there, there should all, always be respect you know for those that have have, have loved you in that way and, and and when fathers when we can get it right to, to me we should be striving to get it right and not just say, well, that's the ABCs of me. If, if they don't like it, then then they'll just have to deal with it. And now you deal with it. You, you let God make some changes in you. How many fathers here would say, God's been making changes in me? Oh, yeah. Amen. God's been making some changes in me. Helping me to be a, a better dad. But, you know, as I was just, you know, having the right environment so dads have the right mindset don't don't get offended at your children listen to me you know it's it's sometimes you may get offended or get upset and, and, and get mad and, and then then you have this anger and then you have these you know as what pastor tony was saying that, that you know sometimes you may discipline them in, in, in the wrong way and and the bible says don't do that do that it's like so as as i was just you know training is is really being the example how how, how well do you example things are you patient are you kind come on what what is love hardly notices when it's been wrong so dad stop why every time i turn around you're doing something wrong well you got you got your eyes on that now that's my mom is watching, watching for you, for, for you to mess up. Stop that! Stop looking at your children, waiting for them. Yeah, I knew they would do it. Stop looking through that eye. You know, have the eyes of, of Jesus, and that is the eye of love. Being patient, being kind, not not rude, not puffed up, not you know thinking the best. How many know that, that dads, we, we, we need to think the best of our children? Well, they got to prove it. Let me ask you this. To, to love somebody, do they have to prove it to you that they love you? No, it, it shouldn't be that way. If you love somebody, you don't have to prove that you love me. I'm going to prove to you that I love you. Amen. Amen. But he, he gave me this here. He said, uh, how many here have ever seen angry drivers? Road rage. Anybody? I might be in that <laughs> at times. <laughs> but it's like, you know, if, if, if we would just understand that when you're driving and you get upset with somebody, what do you want to do? I mean, I'm, I'm going to catch up and let them know, hey, I was turning. I had to turn. You know, sometimes people will just honk and do things. It's like, I did what was supposed to be done, and now you're going to get on my case. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anger, don't, the Bible says put away anger. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah, but I have a problem with that. Well, I know somebody who can help you with that. Amen. Amen. The Lord can help you to get rid of things. Yes. Anybody ever have a fly in the house? Oh. And what, I mean, the front board is that fly and swarm. Oh. I'm going to get this thing. Get it out of here. You know, sometimes we just hold on to things like, oh, that's my anger. <laughs> <laughs> and we just want to pet it. <laughs> see my anger? No, I don't want to see your anger. 
I mean, you don't want to see my anger, do you? Really? No, I, I, I don't want to show that. I, you know, first of all, it's not mine. I'm not claiming it as mine. Right. So it's learning to let self-control have its work in me. Amen. Amen. So there, there's things in God's word that will help you to mellow out. So that you're, you're, you're not this angry driver. <laughs> Driving your family. Always mad at your family. I'm always mad. Every time I see dad, he's always mad. I understand things can get you mad or get you angry, but it's like, don't do it. Don't, don't allow anger to have the best of you. Because if anger has the best of you, that's what your family gets. And, and you're so much more than that. Amen? Yeah. You're so much more than that. You're created in God's image. I mean, you have the Spirit of God on the inside of you. I mean, you can make your family such a blessing. How many here, Dad, you want your family to be a blessing? I mean, all, all of us should, man, I want my family to be a blessing. I want my children to be blessed and be a blessing to those around them. How about the slow driver? <laughs> Anybody ever get behind a slow driver? <laughs> I got another one on Tommy. <laughs> it's on Route 4. And he's, I mean, there's a line of about like 20 cars. And he's thinking, who is in the leading the front of this? So he, he sees, I got a ton of that. He gets around there and he gets it. It's Grandma. <laughs> it's Grandma Dawn. She drove 45 out of town, 45 in town. It was one speed. But it's like, it's amazing though. It's, it's like people who drive slow and it seems like they never get anywhere on time. <laughs> Anybody know a slow driver? It's just like, they just... You know, sometimes, you know, he, he kind of, they don't get there on time. They don't, and how many know sometimes when you don't get there on time, you miss out? You miss out. Dad, you don't want to miss out. Listen to me, you don't want to miss out on, on, on your children's lives, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. I mean, you want to, it's kind of like the three little bears. It's, you know, you got to have the right, <laughs> you know, the right environment, the right place, the right mindset, the right of, of, of how you look at your life. You know, your life is important. I mean, you, God has given you that responsibility of driving your family, of, of, of leading your family. And, and it's like, don't take that lightly. And you might say, well, they're already grown. Like I said, you're still able to speak into your children's lives. Amen. You will always be dad. Amen. Listen to me. You will always be dad. So don't think that you can't speak into your children's lives. Amen? Amen. And, and you want to be driving the right speed. You, 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 you want to have the right environment. You, you want to be at the places where your children are at and what they're doing and understand what they're involved in and and and, and don't be off somewhere else well I can't be with them 24 7 I understand that I can't either but let me know that we can pray let me know that you can set up time with your children your grandchildren you know, something that we like to do with mom and dad that after church we go over there and we have a meal together and we kind of just have some family time. You know, I've, I've learned this, that with, with Maverick, he, he, he likes a certain time where, where we play and he has a great mind. I mean, we can play all kinds of things. And, and to me, it's I'm, I'm loving my grandson. I'm spending time with my grandson. And, and, and I want to do that with all my grandchildren, you know. And, and there are, I mean, then uh, Dallas will come in and, and, and she'll be the fruit bat <laughs> with the game. But it, it's fun. It's fun. And uh, just to play, you know, and, and the things, Sonic, 
Kirby. <laughs> I mean, all these things that we'll, we'll play and do together, but it's like I'm imparting something to my grandchildren. And it's like to have time for them. Sometimes I, don't, I just don't have the time. I don't have the time. Well, make some time. You know, this is the next one here, the fast driver. The fast driver. Let's just get it done. Let's get where we need to be. Let's go. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Come on, I'm in a hurry. Hurry it up. Everything's at fast speed. Just, I mean, and, 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 and you go through life, and it's just, I'm in a hurry. I'm in a hurry. I got to get somewhere. I got to get. You know, I can't, I can't dilly-dally around. Get in here, let's go. And it's like you're, you are missing the journey. Anybody ever go on a vacation? We got to get there quick. No, you, you don't need to go to the bathroom. We're going to get there. We got to get there. We're in a hurry. You know, it's, it's like it's relatable because we can un understand that sometimes in life that sometimes it's like we're always in a hurry. I got to go here. I got to do this. I got to meet here. I got to And it's like, and, 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 and before you know it, you're 60. <laughs> and all of you can relate, you know, to an age of where time goes quickly. Time goes quickly. And you think, where's the time gone? And you think, Lord, I, there's so much to do. There's so much to pour into. And, and, and to never lose sight of, of today is the best day of our lives. Amen. The fast driver. So don't, dads, let's, let's what, are, what are our children seeing in us? I mean, right today we're golden. And you might say, well, what does that mean? It's Father's Day. Okay? <laughs> That's what I mean. Exactly. You're going to be celebrated today, but I don't know about tomorrow. <laughs> or the next day. Or the next day. How do they see you? How do they see you? Dad doesn't have any time for Growing up, that's kind of how I felt. I, I really didn't have a dad that I felt was there, but I had a couple of brothers, not Scott, <laughs> the other two. <laughs> Scott was always getting me in trouble. <laughs> but if, to have time and do things, and, you know, sometimes you, you, you do have Brothers that will just step in and, and, and take on that, that role. How many have had somebody in your life, you know, your, your dad wasn't really involved in your life, but he had somebody step in there and, and, and be that to you? So, you know, one of the things for, for me, of, of, I don't want to miss out on my children, my grandchildren. I want them to know that I love them, that I have time for them. And I truly enjoy it. I mean, I may wear out quick, but <laughs> I truly enjoy it. And uh, pouring into them. Now, fourth gear, this is reassure and reaffirm your love and commitment to your children. How many know they need that? You know, the word reassure means say or do something to remove the doubt and fear of something. So dads, don't, don't promise to do something and not do it. Okay? So if you're, if you're going to say something, then do it. And, and, and if you miss it and time's gone by, then, then you communicate with your children, you missed it. You fell short. Yeah. You'll, you'll be surprised at, at, it's okay, dad. I love you. It's It'll, it's it's all right. We'll 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 do something. So reassure them that that you are 
want to do something. To reaffirm means to confirm the validation or correctness of something. To reaffirm your love and commitment to your children. See, it's it's not, I've, I've heard so well, you know, now that you turn 18, you're out of the house. I don't have to deal with you anymore. We know that's the wrong approach with our children. Yeah, whether 18 or 108. I think somebody, I, I think the oldest person, you know, you know, the lifespan of 120. And I said, well, not too many people, people reach that. The point I'm making that whatever the age is, that you're still, as dads, called to, to reassure and reaffirm to your children that you love them, that you care for them, that you're there for them, that, 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 you're, that they're not alone. You know, sometimes people get out of the house and I, I, I never hear much of, you know, on a, on a certain day, but it shouldn't be that way. I mean, call your children. Go visit your children. Just show up. You might say, oh, that might cause problems. No, it won't. You know, I, I, I wish that I still had, you know, both my parents are gone. And in that, it's, it's not a sad thing. It's just, you know, they had accepted Jesus. But it's like to have the opportunity to sit down, just talk with them. Just let them know I'm so glad, you know, that, that you're my mom. You know, I, I wish Dad I could, you know, I, I, I had more of a kind of, he wasn't raised in, in, in a godly in home. He wasn't raised in, of, of how, what we're talking about today. And, and uh, so you can't know something unless you're taught something. So what I'm saying to you today is, is teach your children well. And what are you going to teach them? Love. Love is unconditional, even when they miss it. Anybody in here ever miss it? All of us have fallen short at times. And for us to be able to mentor our children, love our children, reaffirm. So I want, going forward, I want you to look and see, am, am I the fast driver? Am I the angry driver? Am I the slow driver? What, you know, what's the right speed? What, you know, to create the right atmosphere of, of, of you know, you were created and you have things in you. You're in the driver's seat. I mean, Begin to speak volume into your children, into your grandchildren, into your great-grandchildren. Start, start loving them. Start showing them what God has given you. Well, God didn't give me anything. I, I made myself. No. God gave you the ability. The Bible says God gave you the ability to get wealth. It's, there's, there, there's no self-made man. Dads, if, if you think you're a self-made man, well, I work hard. Well, praise the Lord. That's what the Bible says you should do. You, you should provide for your family. But what about loving your family? What about, you know, what, it, what, what we just talked about today? First gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear. And I want you to think about that today. All, all, all that's been spoken to you now in that you, you've been troopers, you you you've sat through two pastors ministering today. I know Pastor Tony's long-winded, but <laughs> he's not. He's not. I, I I love him. You know we we we've we've actually have a great bond. I mean we we you know he's. A little younger than me. I know you can't tell. <laughs> but, you know, to treat him like a son, to treat him like, 
you know, somebody that I'm mentoring, somebody that I'm proud of that I am. You know, I am proud of Pastor Tony. So we have this relationship that we can kind of speak to one another. Now, with this, we've we've got, like I said, we've got some parting gifts and dads, we want you know, we want all the men to stand up because I want to pray over you. I want to speak a blessing over you. All the all the men. Thank you. You know, going forward, it's like there's always entering and leaving. And it's like as we leave today, I, I, I want God's blessing to be upon you, to empower you. I mean, to be the men of God that God's called you to be. You know, to allow him to work in you. And it's like, don't, don't hold on. Listen, past failures... We've all failed. We've all missed the mark. But today is a new day. Amen. And going forward. So so let's let's go forward and just allow God's blessing to just pour out on us. Father, I thank you right now for every man in here. Father, not only in the sanctuary, but throughout this building. Father, I ask that you would bless them beyond what they could even ask or imagine. Lord, that you would open the eyes of their understanding. Father, that that love, that deposit of you that's in them, Lord, that they'll begin to just reach out to their children, their grandchildren, just let them know how important they are, Lord, to all of us, Lord, to us as dads, that, that, that we would love them as you have loved us. And Father, that you, you said your love would never fail. So, Father, we thank you for just, Father God, those, Father, every family overcoming every obstacle, Father, every difficulty, everything that may have, have weighed them down. Father God, that that weight would be just, Father, that it would be dropped off of them. Father, that heaviness, Lord, that they're carrying. Father, that you'll just remove that from their shoulders, from their life. And Father God, that they would be, have that, that, that freedom. Freedom, Lord. There would be that freedom to, to love as you have loved us. And Lord, that, that, that they would grow in, in, in that, Lord. That they would grow in, in, in loving Father, their families. Father, I thank you for it. I, I thank you for that deposit in each and every one of them. Lord, I give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, we all said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now, now, what we're going to do, you, you, you may be seated. I still have five minutes. <laughs> I, I got that clock up there. But uh, what we want to do is, uh, I believe, just have uh, kind of the, the men on this side will kind of kind of bring you through here, or, or, or I guess we can pass them out, but why don't you come up here, and uh, Pastor Tony, can you come up here too, and we'll kind of just, we'll have you kind of this, this side, and this side, which which side you want, and we'll, we'll give them a car and, and a dad's root beer, okay? So, so, so that we don't run into everybody. So why don't we just do this side first here and kind of have them coming through there. So this side, let's, let's have you, we're going to hurt you through here and get you, you can pass that out and we'll. Thank <laughs> you. 
family go go take a picture at the winter circle over here so uh let me know that they say pictures tell a, a thousand words you know just a picture so there, there there's a story so make sure you get your story get that picture taken and, and, and remember this day you know you came here on purpose you know we we, we met here and, and what god spoke to us and if we'll take a hold of it and apply it, woo, doggy. I mean, some good things are going to be seen and heard. Amen? So let's stand to our feet. Father God, I thank you today that we, we've heard, Lord, your word. And Father God, we thank you for just helping us to apply it today and the next day. Father, just throughout this year, Lord, speak to our heart, Lord, to, to minister to our families. Father, help us to drive to drive them some, somewhere where good, some, somewhere good where you're at. Father, I thank you that your angels would encamp around us and as we leave today, that your protection would be upon us. In Jesus' name, we all said, Amen. Amen.